Volare. Oh. Every time I see the Fountain of Trevi, I think about that classic song that was adapted by Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra also had a hand in writing another song for a film called Three Coins into the Fountain, released in 1954. It was one of the first major Hollywood films to feature this fountain of Trevi in the eternal city of Rome. I'm Ariel with Urbanus, and today let's explore some of the most beautiful tourist destinations in the entire world, specifically at night where it glows under the moonlight. This is the Fountain of Trevi. Let me know where you're watching from and let me know, have you been to the Fountain of Trevi and have you thrown a coin here before? Because I may just throw a coin. But I will need to know if you want all of me, all of you, if all of you want me to throw a coin so I can come back to Rome and do maybe another two more weeks of live videos, possibly in the summertime, and then go to Milan and to a few other different cities, Venice and Florence. Let me know if you want me to throw that coin so I can come back to Italy and show all of you the history of the other cities of this wonderful, vibrant, vibrant country filled with so much history and amazing food. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Hello, Carmen. Okay, last time I was here, it was raining and had the whole place for yourself. Yeah, I can imagine uh, it was supposed to rain tonight. It hasn't yet, but it might rain. And if it does, it will also probably clear up, which would be good news. Good evening, Lou. Hello, Orlinda. Hello, everyone. everyone. So this is the Fountain of Trevi. But what is the Fountain of Trevi? It actually has way deeper importance than the mere beautiful Baroque sculpture that is in the style of Bernini. This ties all the way back to ancient Rome, like most monuments do all around Rome. It's a very old city. But this ties back to 19... B.C. But wait a minute, that's a Baroque statue, definitely after 1600s. And a lot of people think it's Bernini. No, it's not Bernini. Bernini, you know, he's a great artist, but he didn't get to build the fountain he wanted to. The Pope during Bernini's time actually hired Bernini to start making sketches. He, the Pope at that time was tired of the tiny little fountain that was here. So he asked the greatest artist of his time, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, to throw a few sketches. However, that Pope died. As most popes do at a certain point, you know, popes are human. And the project was abandoned. And Bernini never got to build his fountain. Go a hundred years forward. 1730s. The competition is held. Let's learn more about it as we get closer to the fountain. And should I throw a coin? Let me know. Should I throw a coin and have more videos throughout Italy? Let me know. It's been raining here, Lou. I did five euros. <laughs> so, Madeline, Madeline, you really wanted to guarantee that you were going to throw that coin. So, this is a great view of the Fountain of Trevi. Pro tip go to the church right in front of here. There's a mass currently going on. And stand right in this niche no one's going to bother you here because if you dare to sit by the fountain of trevi you just might be whistled at and no i'm not talking about a wolf whistle like they do in the united states of america i'm talking about a whistle from the police not allowing anyone to sit but why well because a few years ago back in 2002 fendi 
gave $2.2 million to repair the fountain. This is the third major restoration. First one started in 1988 when they had to repair a lot of the water systems. Then in 1998, when they found cracks through the statues and hired a team of sculptors. And then in 2002, with Fendi. Fendi coming to the rescue as Bulgari came to the rescue for the Spanish Steps. And as many fashion houses have been coming to the rescue for the other monuments. Hey Roy, you say throw the coin. No. Gladys, you made it to the Trevi Fountain? Yes, I did. Okay, everyone, tell your friends and family about the Trevi Fountain, this Facebook Live broadcast, so we can get as many people here as possible. You've been there in 2011, it was in the middle of summer. Oh, that's so wonderful. And uh, Don watching a beautiful fall lunchtime in Ohio. Oh, cool. Thought you are watching during lunch. Robert, hello. Okay, last time you were here it was raining. And I read that. Amazing, welcome everyone. Seventeen thirty two. The Pope at the time holds a contest. He wants to see who can build the most beautiful fountain. Something extremely extravagant. Maybe even best the genius himself, Bernini. At least in terms of the size. So one architect was going to be the top contender. His name was Alessandro Galilei. Now, you might recognize that name because Galilei is one of the relatives of Galileo, the man who discovered that the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, but the Sun was. At least that was uh, what people thought. So it's more complicated than that. He didn't actually discover that, but he dared to confront the church about it. So, Alessandro Galileo was the top contender, but there was another man, Niccolo Salvi. The Pope chose Galilei because according to the Pope, he had the better design. But the Roman people went in uproar. They started protesting the decision. How could they allow this Galilei to win this massive award by building this huge fountain in the middle of Rome? And no, it wasn't because of his relative Galileo. No, people, people didn't care about that too much. That's overblown in today's textbooks. People were pissed off that Alessandro Galilei was a Florentine. They wanted Nicola Salvi, a true Roman, to build the Fountain of Trevi. Nicola Salvi went as crazy as possible, using actual elements from Bernini's sculpture. Nicola Salvi won. And for nearly 30 years, they were building this sculpture in the middle Oceanus. But Nicola Salvi did not live to see the opening of this fountain. Because he died 11 years before, was officially started running and inaugurated by the Pope at the time. Let's take a look at it. So right in the middle, we have Oceanus who is the god of the ocean. In Greek times, Oceanus was a little bit more of a minor god. He was the god of a waterway that was at the end of the world and led to the Elysian fields. He's flanked by two horsemen with wings, two pegasuses, pegasi. And then we have two other figures right over here. Now, after Nicolo Salvi died, they hired a team of architects and sculptors to finish the job. And that's why you have this beautiful building also setting up the entire sculpture. Let's take a closer look. Hello, Julie from Seattle. Welcome. Oceanus, you might have remember him because he is also the apparently the god that is depicted in the Boca de Veritat, which is the mouth of truth. So many artists, architects, etc. in history who didn't live to see their work even completed or appreciated. Yeah, it's sad that Salvi 
never got to see how popular this got. But why is this here in the first place? Well, it's here in the first place because Nicola. It was here in the first place because there was a fountain here for nearly 2,000 years. It's packed to the brim. 2,000 years there was a fountain here. Why? Because this was the ending point of the Aqua Virgo. The Aqua Virgo is one of the original aqueducts that supplied water to ancient Rome. This is the ending point for the Aqua Virgo. Aqua Virgo, however, no one really knows its true source. And the reason no one knows its true source is because it's kind of deep in the mountains a few miles away of Rome. But according to the lore, it's called the Aqua Virgo because the Romans at the time actually took... They took... They went through the mountains trying to find a source of one of the rivers that was running through. They couldn't find it. But apparently, according to legend, they ran across a virgin. A virgin that led them seriously into the mountains to find the waterway, the source that would become the Aqua Virgo. But why Virgo? Well, Virgo means the virgin aqueduct. However, 2006, people are here. Bunch of people are all here, like every single day in the Fountain of Trevi. However, they were shocked because the water wasn't crystal clear blue like it is right now. In 2006, on that night, the water turned red. Blood red. The fountain was red and the water was spouting red. But why? Well, a vandal came during the middle of the night and added food coloring to the fountain. The Roman city panic because they had no idea if this was going to ruin the entire white marble scu uh, um, sculptures that come from Travertine Tivoli, one of the major places to find marble in, the war in here in Italy. However, luckily, it did not discolor anything and they were able to clear it out quickly. But why was it spouting red? Well, the reason it was spouting red is because the water is constantly recycled. It's going in and out. More than 2.2 million cubic liters of water are expelled every single day here. But a bit about the coins. I want to be like you, says Cassandra. Everything looks perfect. Oh, Cassandra. <laughs> Why me specifically? You could be here, I mean. Uh, and here are the coins. But why the coins? Well, these coins come back to 1954. An American film where a secret spy means, meets a woman here in Rome and they have to throw a coin in the Trevi. But followed a few years later, 1960, a very famous film, a film that would shape Rome forever. That film is La Dolce Vita by Fellini. And Fellini had a scene where the Swedish actress, who well, plays basically a Swedish actress in the film as well, Anita Ekberg, Ekberg, comes over here with the other main character who's kind of wooing her. And she comes and swims in the fountain of Trevi. And what do they do with the money? So over $3,000 are collected every night at the Fountain of Trevi. It all goes to a charity, specifically to a supermarket for the needy in Rome. Over 1.4 million euro have been collected over the years. However, there have been thieves. One of the longest thieves is a man who went by the nickname Darjanto. And he stole coins from the fountain for 34 years. Okay, everyone, do you want to see more Italy 
sometime in 2020. If you do, you gotta press that heart button as hard as you can and share it this, these, uh, this video with friends and family so we can get as many people in this video as possible and more people can know about Urbanist. And if I see a bunch of hearts, this coin is going to go right from my right hand over my left shoulder into the Fountain of Trevi as they did in Three Coins in the Fountain, the film, and as people do all the time nowadays. So the more hearts I see, the more this coin goes over. And this coin is for luck for return to Italy because I still want to show you so many more cities here. I want to show you Florence, I want to show you Milan, Venice, Calabria, and Sicily. Yes, everyone say yes. I hope the coin works for you. I'll see a bunch of hearts. Keep on going, keep on going. <laughs> keep your mouth shut while I throw the coin. <laughs> I will, I will, so a coin won't land in my mouth. <laughs> All right, everyone. Oh, all right, let's go. Let's 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 come back to Italy, shall we? There we go. <laughs> all right, it's it landed somewhere around there. There we go, everyone. We're coming back to Italy, 2020. Thank you for pressing that heart button. I appreciate it. We're coming back to Italy 2020. Stay tuned. And if you want, give me coins so we can increase the chances of coming back here to Italy, showing you other history of cities. You can become a supporter right down there, $5 a month. You get also early access to 360 videos and bonus videos of these travels. Now let's explore a little bit. Maybe let's go see the ruins of the aqueducts and maybe find a good place for gelato. The water is so pretty. It really is. It really is. Look at that. Look how packed it is with people. And thank you everyone for sharing and pressing that heart button. I appreciate it. Live video is like theater. We need more people in the theater for it to be as fun, as vibrant as possible. The more people we have, the better the live video. And in Facebook, there is no algorithm. There is no way people can search for my videos. Unlike in YouTube, there's no way people can really find it. You have to find it kind of by chance by seeing it on your feed. And shares are the best way for more people to see these, these videos. And the more people are sharing, the better uh, videos I can give you from all around the world. Someone's getting, doing their wedding photos here. And Nina, I'm so glad you can tune in. Yeah, I know with my European lives, it, it is a little bit hard for US viewers to see at a reasonable time. But don't worry, I'll be going to places like South America. I really want to go to Machu Picchu. Uh, and I might be doing a few more American cities and then also stay tuned. I'll also be doing some Asia in the near future. Gretchen, you say book uh, your trips through me. Say you will go next to nothing. Gretchen, send me your information. I'm curious. Send me a, 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 a message directly to Urbanist. A well, great place for wedding photos. It really is. It really is. So they're getting married. They're taking photos here. A bunch of people are throwing coins. That dude just chucked the coin over. Some people are doing that. He's not coming back to Rome because he didn't do it the right way. You gotta throw it over your left shoulder with your right hand. If you by chance don't have a right hand, it's okay. You're exempted. But if you do have a right hand, you have to throw it with the right hand. You gotta follow the rules, otherwise you're not coming back to Rome. What did I eat today? <laughs> I ate pasta twice and a maritoso in the morning. Maritoso is a 
uh, bun stuffed with a bunch of whipped cream. Ariel, you do such an amazing uh, job of making us viewers feel like such part of the journey. I'm so glad. glad. And that's why I like making these kind of, um, these kind of like two weeks worth of videos. I found that this is kind of a really cool way of making uh, daily videos. I might not do videos daily all the year through. It's a little bit hard to do so because there's a lot of history. But these kind of two weeks spurts of live videos is fun because we're exploring the city all together. So I'm glad, Rocky. And thank you everyone who has become a supporter recently. I actually took a 360 photo, so you'll be seeing this in 360 as well. And I took a 360 video for supporters. I'll be uh, popping up soon. And this guy is taking a video with the DJI Osmo uh, Mini. You stay thin by walking too, uh, so much. Yeah, I do, luckily. I've been eating a whole lot of pasta, which is irregular for me. Scusi. I really want to eat some seafood. I haven't found any seafood yet. I gotta bump into it. All right. Now let's walk towards the Spanish Steps so we can see that at night. Not much more history left, so feel free to ask me any questions for these remaining 10 minutes. Oh, let's see the side of the fountain. That's cool. Ooh, he made the entire thing kind of like meld into... Oh, I like this. He, didn't, he made the entire thing look like it melds into the ocean. So the Trevi Fountain has been recreated in Epcot, Epcot Center, which is uh, Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And it also has been created like a mini version. Has been recreated in, I think, the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas, if I'm correct. The fountain was inaugurated officially in uh, 1762. It took uh, almost 34 years to finish completion. <laughs> this building is beautiful too. White marble building. Wow. So the rock extends almost all around to the street and the facade, it seems, was built specifically for the fountain because the backside is different. This is so cool. Look at the sides. Don't only look up. Don't only look down. Don't only look uh, sideways. But look towards the side of the buildings. Any hip pockets? I haven't encountered any yet. I'm very uh, precocious. Also, I don't carry stuff in my pocket. I carry in my backpack and deep buried into my backpack, so it's not easy to reach in. So I haven't encountered personally, but people, I haven't seen any in action. But I've heard reports. People do mention that it has happened. Stay away from the guys who are giving you bracelets. Sometimes they get a little bit close. And a woman earlier today did a, uh, seemed like she was a gypsy woman. She came also very close to me while I was buying my Metro ticket. So just watch out for those instances. Otherwise, Italy feels very, very safe. It's a very calm city. Lit up, vibrant, especially in the historical center. Also, a great thing about Euro is that you can carry dollar and two dollar coins. So I don't really carry money or a wallet in my pocket. I just carry those two dollar coins and stuff them into a little coin pocket in my jeans. Uh, where they're not jingling around and they're also not so easy to take. Uh, 
Oh, look at that fountain. So beautiful on the side as well. No, very little smoking. I don't think it's... I'm not entirely sure if it's allowed or not, but I, just, I haven't seen that much smoking. Oh, wow. Beautiful fruit stand. Very brightly lit. Ciao, Danielis. Bienvenuti. Danielis. And uh, for my other Spanish speaking viewers, uh, you will have an easier time speaking in Italy because the language is very similar. Uh, para las personas que están mirando en español, hablando italiano es eh, bastante fácil porque hay montones de palabras bien similares. So I'll be posting photos of the pasta I ate in the comments below. I'll recommend them placed right by the Coliseum. Don't take any offers of people willing to take a photo for you. They run off with the camera. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do that, especially if they come to you. <laughs> don't do that. I love these mini buses in Rome. Very similar to the micro buses that are also in Mexico City, which I, I hope to show you uh, very soon. Right now it's about 7.20ish, if anyone can know exactly, but yeah, around 7.20 p.m. Here's another major thoroughway. Not as big as, of course, Paris or London. Robert, great question. Do they have pizza by the slice or is it pizza whole? So you'll find a lot of pizza restaurants that tend to do Naples style pizza, which we'll learn about when we go to Naples. So I should be going to a specific restaurant. <laughs> However, you can also get Roman style pizza, which is uh, pizza by the slice here in Rome, but not the slice you're thinking about like in New York City. Slices, Roman style pizza tends to be square much thinner, fluffier bread. Not like a Sicilian, not like a grandma, but a little bit more fluffier than that. And then it also has a bunch of toppings on it. And it's usually sold by weight. So they cut up a piece with scissors and they ask you how much you want. You can dictate whatever size you want. They'll weigh, uh, weigh it and then you buy it. And it's great because you get a wonderful variety of different types of toppings. Very fresh mozzarella. You have stuff with anchovies, which is actually really good. I highly recommend the anchovies here in Italy. And there are many McDonald's in Rome. No Starbucks's, only one Burger King, only one KFC, a bunch of other McDonald's. So Italy is not that populated with fast food. Uh, well, American style fast food.
Oh, well, there's a gallery opening. That's cool. So when, especially if you're in center Rome, where it's some, uh, very well lit, highly recommend going to the side streets. It's really awesome. There's a lot of things you can bump into. If you're here, sometimes it's very easy to go into a gallery opening. If you know Italian, otherwise you might stick out. But if you know the language, it's easier to kind of just jump into a gallery opening. Same thing in New York City, permitting you no know English which you do if you're watching this. Oh, Donald, I hope, uh, I hope you're cured of, uh, any back pain. Thank you so much for watching. Are those cobblestones original? You know what? I'm not 100% sure. Original from where? That's another great question. Uh, I would say they could be at least 200 years old. That's my estimation. Same thing with uh, what we encounter in Paris. But don't quote me on that because I, I'm not 100% sure. So the water system we talked about earlier serviced all around the city. This fountain's very great clean water to grab. And navigation is tricky in Rome, so don't expect to immediately know your way around. I'm a person with, a, I think, a really great sense of direction, but even here I kind of get lost, which I am right now. I was heading to the Spanish Steps, but I have no idea where I am right now. And it's easy for that to happen because there's so many crisscross streets, tiny little alleyways. Here's La Villa del Corso. Okay, now I know I am. I know where I am because of this main street. So this is one of the most, more popular streets in Rome, which I talked about on my episode of Mysteries of the Eternal City, because this used to be a horse race course, hence the name Villa del Corso, Corso course. And this is kind of the main pasajada which is the place where people kind of stroll to see and to be seen. Today is not really the day that's more fun, like Friday or Saturday. But you still see a lot of people strolling. Well, let's take a passaggiata through the Villa del Corso. Ooh, actually, let's take a detour here, Villa de la Vite, because I think are, are, are all of you in the mood for gelato? Let me know, are you in the mood for gelato? Hey, Paula. Oh, welcome, Paula. Thank you for all the recommendations you left earlier. 
Um, you say you could try Roman sandwiches called Tramassini. They're so delicious. You know what? I haven't bumped into those. I don't know exactly where to find them. I've only seen one, which was Trapezino, which is the franchise that has spread over to New York City and a few other cities. But I haven't seen that many Trapezini around. But I would love to try it when I bump into it. If you have any specific flavors, uh, let me know. I mean, specific, sorry, flavors. I was reading Lou's comment. If you have any specific recommendations for Trapezini, let me know. Oh, beautiful restaurant here. Let's see if they have rose flavor. Yeah, they probably do a lot of places. Actually, great question. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if rose flavor is common. I know it's common in Greece. I'm not sure if it's common here. Let's see. So here are some hotels. This one's dating back to 1910, wow. And here we are, everyone. One of the highest rated gelato places. Now, why is it so empty? In Rome, it might be a little bit counterintuitive, but some of the more popular places or the, the well-rated places, the places where Italians like to go, it's, people really love it, don't tend to be that full. Uh, especially during the day, or well, early evening. Later in the evening, it might get a little bit more full because Italians tend to have their gelato a little bit later. Um, so that's kind of counterintuitive. I noticed that with a lot of like, top-rated places. There's, they're not that full compared to the popular touristy areas. Let's get some gelato. Let me know, what's your favorite flavor? Your flavor. Puntualità e la gentilezza dei re. Buonasera. Buonasera. Sì. Hai fatto bene, bravo. Grazie per essere stato qua. Io sono molto quando voglio. E poi hai la cena, quindi non è che tu devi venire a tutto il Dobbiamo venire a mezzanotte. Sì, certo. Dopo cena già. Eh? Non ero più carino. Dopo cena gelato. Eh. No? Eh. Vabbè, cena gelato? Sì. Vuoi per domani? 
No, per stasera. Ah, e allora? Però mi serviva un chilo e mezzo, perché siamo no. Un chilo e mezzo tutto eh, no. il grano? Che non c'era l'ho te l'ho già messo io. Ah, perché ho messo che non ce n'era. Si può scrivere, ma che cos'è? Non ho avuto paese. Non ho avuto paese. Oh, the media, please? Si, sì. yeah, faccio grazie. pagare loro. Cool, grazie. Grazie. Okay. Yeah, I'll have the medium. Yeah. With uh, pistachio. Okay. Um, let's see. Cafe. Okay. And how many do I have? Three. Okay. Perfect. The is suka pumpkin? Yeah. Pumpkin. Okay. Yes. Oh. Pumpkin. Ooh, amazing. It's very good. It's very good? Okay, it's very orange. It. Yeah, I'll have pumpkin. It's very orange. <laughs> very orange, yeah. Is, it, uh, is pumpkin in season during this time in Italy? Yeah, yeah. It okay. very good season. Oh. Halloween is coming soon. Oh yeah, that's season true. season almost all the year, but it's typical of October. Oh, okay, I see. For the first soups of the year. What's another typical flavor during October? Pomegranate. Pomegranate, oh interesting. Mm. Pomegranate. Nuts. Nuts? Oh, Walnut. Yeah. Walnut. Walnuts. 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 Yeah. Walnuts. Oh, okay. Oh, I love that. So, so the flavors change all the time. Yeah. Okay, Thank grazie. You. Have a great day. Grazie. Okay. All right, everyone, look at this. Look at this beautiful piece of art right here. Bernini couldn't have sculpted this better. Look at this. So the place I went to is called... I'll write the name later, but... La Strega Nociola. La Strega Nociola. So this is gonna get this is gonna melt very quickly. Oh without the lime. Mmm. Wow. Oh that is good. So I mentioned I'm not an ice cream eater, but the gelato here is Wonderful. Even ever since I was a little kid, uh, throughout my entire life, I just did not like ice cream too much, aside from maybe eating some, some, um, some milkshakes. But over here, the gelato is just absolutely addicting. So I got cafe, pistachio, which is in season, and suka, which is pumpkin, also in season. Mmm. Mmm. On. A cono, which is a cone. Now the cono isn't from Italy. Gelato is from Italy. Dates all the way back to the ancient Arabs who rule over Sicily. And there was some of the Arabs would go over into the mountains of Sicily, get snow during the winter time keep it deep underground so by when summer comes they would make ices the ices at that time were mostly made out of fresh fruits so more like sorbets but then milk was introduced mm. this coffee flavor is amazing let's try the pumpkin flavor i gotta put this down i would take this to the spanish steps however no you bring a gelato to the Spanish steps, you're bound to get tackled and arrested. All right, I'm exaggerating. You're bound to get whistled at. Uh, not tackled and arrested. <laughs> but let's go near the Spanish steps, see if there's any place to sit as this is melting deeply into my hand. Mm. Okay, everyone. I can't switch the camera. I, my hands are full. So feel free to ask me anything. Uh, the three flavors I wouldn't get... <laughs> So there was no rose. 
Rose, I, it strikes me as not a Roman flavor. It might not be because it's in season. Here, the gelato flavors are fresh. It's one thing I like over America. Sorry, America, you, they make ice cream with uh, ingredients that is not in season, so they're not the freshest ingredients. Here, they only use ingredients that are in season. A good majority of the uh, flavors are in season. So that's why here we have suka during this time of year. Mm. And pistachio. And maybe rose comes in season. I'm not sure when. Maybe springtime? Probably springtime. Whew. According to Alexa, storm warnings in Rome until Wednesday. And here we go. The Spanish steps, everyone. I gotta put, put a place to put down this camera. This is where I need a assistant to uh, hold the camera as I eat gelato. There's a wafer here as well. And it looks yummy. It does. So this is Spanish Steps. If we want to learn the history, go back to the Piazza de Popolo video. And I think I found a place to put my camera down. Otherwise, I'm going to have ice cream gelato all around my hands so let me know if you have any questions about gelato so gelato it's made fresh it's been made with the uh, ingredients of the season and it dates all the way back to the, when the Arabs ruled over Sicily which means gelato is a national treasure and gelato here is if you haven't seen my gelato video yet it's special because it's made from ingredients that are fresh the milk is very fresh it only comes usually from a few miles away and also let me sit over here okay everyone bear with me Ooh, I think this is a, a road so let me never mind I'm gonna sit here in the road okay so bear with me But says España, yes, that cookie will slip down. All right, there we go. Oh, freedom. <laughs> oh, that was good. Okay, everyone. I usually don't do this, but desperate times call for desperate me measures. Then I gotta find a fountain to clean my hands. But here is suka. Let's try suka, which is pumpkin. Okay, mmm. Wow, this ain't no pumpkin spice. I can tell you that for sure. This is no pumpkin spice. This is like pure pumpkin. Fresh, pure pumpkin. Mmm, wow. It literally tastes like you're eating a, a massive pumpkin. So pumpkin spice is kind of like a estimation of pumpkin kind of like a hyper hyper pumpkin when you have uh, pumpkin flavors in the US because they tend to be mostly filled with sugar and they have cinnamon and other ingredients when you're tasting pumpkin in the US you're tasting more kind of like pumpkin spice there's a spice usually added onto the pumpkin and then uh, cinnamon maybe nutmeg a few other ingredients right which is delicious I love American pumpkin spice don't get me wrong uh, American pumpkin spice treats are amazing Americans do a great job at that but this is 100% pure pumpkin. Mmm, delicious. Your clip bomb mic works great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for lending your support. I'm able to get that clip bomb mic. So they give you this wafer. So the wafer is an American. Mmm. I'm not sure if the mic is picking up my crunching the wafer is american gelato sicilian slash arab these flavors from the countryside the cone is from a syrian immigrant who was hanging out with an american immigrant the american was making some at the world's fair in chicago it was on uh, 1934 no it was earlier than that 
1904, something along those lines. He was making ice cream, however, he ran out of cups. And by running out of cups means he runs out of business during the World's Fair, which is one of the most visited events in the world. Uh, it used to be before like 1970. So he got desperate. He had no idea what to do. And he went over to a guy right across from him, a Syrian immigrant to the US, who's making these wafers. It's very typical to make wafers in Syria. It's typical to make wafers in a bunch of countries, including Belgium and, and uh, Denmark and a bunch of other countries. But Syrians do wafers as well, also uh, Turks. Actually, those northern countries might have gotten the wafer from the Syrians because that culture kind of moved through up into Eastern Europe and then Northern Europe. So he went over to him and the Syrian immigrant said, hey, I can, I can like maybe whip up this waffle uh, wafer and then instead of putting it as a flat, maybe I can like put it as a cone. And he did, he made a cone wafer. And he scooped the ice cream in it and started selling ice cream. And people went crazy because suddenly you can not only eat the ice cream, but you can eat the very plate you're eating the ice cream in. Mm. Home. Romans might have protested a McDonald's that was being built here in the 1990s. There would have been a massive uproar. However, the Italians are not complaining about this cornetto. Or ocono, I mean. They're not complaining about that. God bless America. <laughs> but they sadly have got they got it right when it comes to ice cream. Mm. Evita, you say here in Renee Brittany you can eat Camber ice cream. Basically French cheese ice cream. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Mm. This feels like a communion wafer. If you're not Catholic, every mass they give you this wafer. It's about to rain. They give you this wafer, and you eat it as kind of like taking the body of Christ. And that ends up being the communion. That's one of the sacraments in Catholic religion. The interesting thing is that that sacrament, that communion, has existed ever since the very foundations of Christianity. And back in the beginning of Christianity, Romans heard of this body of Christ. And they assume that these Christians, this Christian cult, because in ancient Rome, they were a cult at first. Uh, they were just kind of like an offspring of Judaism. Kind of like uh, how uh, the, ch the Church of Scientists, what was it called? I forgot, the Church of Scientists um, is, is a cult of Christianity as well now in modern day. So. The Romans heard of these Christians eating the body of Christ and they thought they were committing cannibalism. All they were doing is eating a wafer. Like we see right here. Mm. Thank you so much for watching, Lou. Scientology, it did not mean Scientology, it meant um, the Church of Christian Science. Christian science, Christian scientists. It's a cult that started in the early 1900s. And when they make those cones fresh, they smell so good. Oh, they really do. It's a very strange at first taste, but then very addictive. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, a lot of these are all flavors. Since uh, if you're used to American flavors, that tend to be like the hybridized version of the flavor. Like pumpkin is that hyper pumpkin filled with cinnamon, filled with nutmeg, if you're used to that chocolate, kind of punch of chocolate in America. America's like that big flavor. Big flavor sometimes is synthesized. So if you're used to that, you're gonna be a little bit off put when you come here to Rome because you're gonna think to yourself, well, this tastes kind of plain. Or it tastes kind of vegetable-y or, or, or too light. Fret not. The more you keep on eating it, the more you'll be amazed by this fresh taste. It might be a little bit hard to get used to if you're used to those very sweet flavors, but the moment you get used to it. I'm a non ice cream eater, so this was a revelation for me.
Mm. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. It's about to rain. If you want to see more of the Spanish steps, watch my Piazza de Popolo video. Cover all the history there. I hope you enjoyed the history of the Fountain of Trevi. Come eat a gelato in Rome, even if you're not an ice cream uh, eater. Highly recommend it if you're a person who doesn't like sweets. Highly recommend it. It's a really delicious experience. The cones, they do make it fresh. Uh, Woodcrafter, how do I know so much about history? I just read a lot. <laughs> and I research for a bunch of these videos. So I've done a video before on the history of ice cream. So did a video on the World's Fair. So uh, the cool thing about doing these videos after three years, the more I read, the more I research, the more I can tell you stuff and make connections to it. So that's how I can tell you the beauty of a cone it dates back to American, some American history. So that's a cool thing. And then I know a bunch of other food history as well. I just love food history. I don't cover it as much, but love food history. All right, everyone, if you want to become a supporter, right down there, you can become a supporter. Think of it as a $5 tip for um, helping to run these videos. So I can give it to you live uh, every single day during these two-week spurts throughout different cities around the world. And you'll get access to 360 videos as well. Or you can give a one-time donation at paypal.me slash Ariel Vieira. Or you can buy yourself merchandise. The first collection is the New York Urbanist Collection. Stay tuned for a Rome collection. Where's the last day? The last day is on the 21st. This is the last day of historic, historical broadcasts. However, I'll be doing an Airbnb tour on my very last morning here on the 24th. Stay tuned. Keep being awesome. And always keep on exploring. Arrivederci, amici. Buona notte. I would wave, but my hands are very sticky right now. Would not be a very nice wave. So... Peace and love, everyone.